The derivation of the Carnot engine's efficiency expression has something interesting. The insight that Clausius had is the striking similarity between these expressions. What followed is this. Combine them. Q2 divided by Q1 is equal to T2 divided by T1. Which means the ratio Q1 to T1 is equal to that of Q2 to T2. Therefore, it is a constant Q divided by T. Think what it says. From the body at high temperature T1, heat Q1 is supplied to the engine. We can calculate Q1 by T1. Similarly, the body at a low temperature T2 receives heat Q2. We can calculate Q2 divided by T2. These two ratios are equal, that is a constant denoted as Q by T. What is the consequence of this? It is as if this Q by T is transferred from high temperature body through the engine to the low temperature body. If you think about what is this difference, it is basically the summation of Q divided by T over the entire cycle. In the Carnot engine, in the first isothermal step, heat Q1 is taken at temperature T1. In the third step, which is also isothermal, heat Q2 is rejected out at temperature T2. Since heat is rejected, it is given a negative sign. Steps 2 and 4 are adiabatic, so the heat involved is zero. Let's write the summation of Q divided by T over all the four steps. It is zero. This can be generalized using integration instead of summation for any arbitrary reversible process. Integration over the entire cycle of delta Q divided by T is equal to zero. The sum of all heat exchanged divided by the temperature at which it is exchanged is zero. What does it sound like? You might remember this. When integrated over a cycle, only a state property is zero. So there is a state property lurking here. Let's recall what we have seen about internal energy, another state property. The cyclic integral of internal energy is zero. Change in a state property is zero in a cyclical process. Or in other words, a state property does not change in a cyclic process. Compare this with what we have learned from Carnot's engine. The cyclic integral of delta Q divided by T is zero. Therefore, this integral which is Q by T is the change in a state property. Notice what I am not saying. I am not saying that the Q divided by T is a new state property. I am saying the change in a new state property is integral delta Q by T. Clausius called this new state property entropy. So change in entropy is integral delta Q divided by T. What is the meaning of this? Delta Q some energy divided by T the temperature. We will get a sense of it as we go along. First, let us make these ideas more concrete with some visualizations. Let's have two states with different values of entropy. We don't know what it is. Its change is integral delta Q divided by T. While going from state 1 to 2, it changes, let's say increases. When the cycle is completed, the change vanishes back to 0. Again, a state property does not change in a cyclical process. What we also know about the state properties is that they don't depend on the path. Remember till now, whatever we have concluded about entropy change is based on the reversible processes in Carnot cycle. What about this quantity in an irreversible process? We will see that in the next video.